Let's see the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Many thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, as always, we like to go through the pages of National Daily. So we call it Off the Press. And Chris Kende Wandu joins us uh, this morning. Well, uh, let's look at the punch. The punch is one of the papers we'll be looking at this morning. 24 hours to campaign. Aina Khan Sultan wants parties and supporters against violence. Mm. Very important. Commission to publish voter register January 2023. SGF sues for peace. Avoid all trances, actions capable of causing violence. Son Wolu and Yakubu quoted on that. A Fanny Ferry justifies obese endorsement. Tunibu's team uh, fumes and tackles a debanjo. Oh well. Federal government reverses Varsity's reopening order. Asu adamant. Mobile transaction hits 11 trillion naira in eight months, according to report. Just before we move away, remove petrol subsidy, implement PIA, LCCI tells the federal government. A group demands sanction as power collapse uh, seven times, I mean eight times if you like to say. Article name Saraki Ayim, other special advisors. And uh, you have uh, Kerry Dolu insist on arms of Hennifer Knox, federal government, Amoteku. Ogun communities lament 100 years of darkness. Electricity projects rot. Wow, that might just be a lot. Uh, that's the much we can take this morning on the punch. You know, very funny, very funny one. Uh, um, I saw someone post online yesterday. Okay, yeah, campaigns are starting, but they did it all in a formality. The person wrote on Twitter said, all in a formality. Um, we've made our minds up already. <laughs> I, I had a good laugh. But um, <clears throat> we go to the nation. Uh, it has some interesting stories. Um, the lead one on the front page of the nation is Repa Omotek Akeridolu. Uh, no going back on plan to arm Omotek and call. All right, so I mean, will he, will he just arm them by himself? Will he need the police approval, government approval? Uh, no going back on plan to arm Omotek and call. Weapons procurement will be backed by law. Outfit needs tools to carry out its duties. All right. Uh, Tinubu Shatima joint ticket best for women. Tinubu Shatima joint ticket best for women. I'm seeing a picture of uh, Senator Olu Remy Tinubu there. I guess maybe she might be the one who said that. Atiku bypasses WK allies named Saraki Oyelola advisors. Been some time since we heard uh, the name of Oyelola. Uh, uh, Atiku bypasses WK. Uh, allies names Saraki or in you know, advisors. Uh, 2,119 miners owing federal government 2.76 billion naira says RMAFC, that's the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission. Uh, what are they doing to get the money back? I think that's what <laughs> I just want to know. Bandit Scale 3 kidnap 22 in Kaduna communities. Really sad. Uh, 500,000 Nigerians await repatriation from Niger, Chad, Cameroon. Uh, don't plunge Nigeria into crisis. Can Sultan warn religious leaders and all the others preach peace? Uh, federal government reverses order urging VCs to open universities. Look at that much later. And uh, Ocean Tribunal agent sitting to October by us, a kidnap suspect paraded. Some headlines on the front page of the nation. Away from the nation, we have the Daily Trust newspaper disquieting APC over composition of campaign team. Mm. And uh, Vice President Yemi Sibajo, Amechi silence raises dust. Tunubu begins campaign with prayer session. Council fails to issue letters to nominees. We're open to working with oil. That's what the spokesman is quoted to say. This is all about the APC. Uh, I'm just wondering why the uh, nation uh, wasn't really big on that. Federal government backtracks withdraw other to reopen varsities. INEC warns parties candidate against hate speech. Bandits kill police inspector. Three orders abduct dozens in Kaduna and Katsina. And flawed courts of 
Lokoja Highway submerges houses and worship centers. I mean, it's really saddening. There's a pictorial representation of what's happening in these places. Oil price dips to $85 per barrel. Unpaid allowances, ex-servicemen take protests uh, to defense headquarters. Man visits Lagos police station to bail friend, steals policeman's phone. What's really going on? But this is the much we can take on at the Daily Trust newspaper. Um, this day, uh, I'm happy they actually included on our, on our list to, today. It uh, has a, a bombshell, mm, what you can call a bombshell headline. We'll go quickly so our guests can comment on the, t on the stories. Or Tom breaks with Wiki says he's not supporting IU's removal. Or Tom breaks with Wiki says he is not supporting IU's removal. R write us to that. Uh, reaffirms confidence in his ability to lead the party to victory. PDP stakeholders pressure Atiku to prevail on chairman to quit. Dino Melai, we're not threatened by our competitors. Ex-VP appoints Saraki. I am Shekarao Sekondas as special advisors. Uh, Sekondas being there, but, uh, <laughs> I'm sure that's uh, a direct, direct dart at Wiki to do your, your worst. <laughs> More from the nation. Adeban Jawai Fenifere supporting Peter B's presidential bid. Um, I think uh, we can move on. The other ones have been covered by the other papers. Let's quickly welcome Chris Kendi Wandu. Uh, he's not, is he on board with us yet? No? Okay. Uh, while we're waiting for him to, to rejoin, let's read some details of uh, that, uh, that story from this day. Um, you know, for me, that's, I think, the biggest headline so far <laughs> in all the papers. And the, the paper has done its work uh, so far. Do we have Chris Candy Wandu back, Mercy? Yes, we do. We do? Okay. So, uh, Chris Candy Wandu, can you hear us? Please kindly confirm. I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, l let's start with uh, th this day. I'll just read a few details, just very short, very quickly. Autumn Breaks with Wiki says he's supporting... Uh, I use removal, reaffirms confidence in his ability to lead the party to victory. What the paper says is the Benue State Governor uh, yesterday dismissed the insinuation that he was in support of the removal of uh, the national chairman of uh, the PDP, saying it is impossible for him to advocate for the removal of someone he helped to appoint, which is true. Uh, Otom reasserted his confidence in IU's ability to lead the party to victory in next year's presidential election in a surprising contrast to the position of his close ally, River State Governor Yeson Wike. Do you think the paper has aptly captured this uh, statement by saying Otom has broken with Wike? What are your thoughts generally on this development? Well, if what, if what is the paper is the, the true position, then it's not surprising to me. Yes, because uh, uh, that time you have seen um, Governor Tom has been uh, uh, somehow inconsistent with his uh, uh, utterances when it comes to this issue. Don't forget how he spoke about Atiku and what transferred between Atiku and Wike when um, Atiku eventually uh, was speaking as the presidential candidate of the PDP. And um, at the point, he was saying that Article reneged on the promise he made um, to the party um, on uh, who is going to pick as uh, his uh, vice presidential candidate. But I, I think it came out to say that um, there was nothing like that, that um, what the, like, he was giving was about three names. And uh, the, uh, the committee set up, headed by Autumn, did not specifically mention that Wiki should be picked as the vice presidential candidate so that he was at liberty to pick who he wanted. And that was how he came about Governor Okowa of um, Delta State. So, and over time, you continue to see the body language of um, Autumn. You will see that you see somebody not. All right, Chris, uh, can you hear us, please? Uh, it, seems, it seems that uh, the network has played a fast one on him. We're sorry for that uh, interruption. We'll try to get back to Chris Kenny Wando as quickly as possible. Uh, but, but in making this, this remark or this statement, uh, the uh, governor of Benue State was reacting to accusations by a group 
that he was involved in ouster moves against the PDP National Fed Chairman, who is a fellow uh, Benue man. Don't forget, Ayo is making some comments regarding his son, Ayo's son, uh, and uh, the governor of Benue State. Uh, but he is hard to say this. I don't know if this will pit him against Wiki in any way, because, of course, Wiki is uh, deep and big on loyalty. Mercy. All right, Chris, can you hear me? Are you back? Yes, I can hear you. Very All right, please go. Here? Yeah, we can. Okay. So, I was saying, oh, this was the... Uh, this day has just published thank you to go by then it's expected don't forget that um, the national chairman of of pdp is from um, benue state and um, he has it that it was wicked and not on that commanded the appointment of um uh senator um uh, yocha ayu as the national chairman of um uh, of pdp so very contrary to what they are it will be so heavy for a person like the governor of Benue State to be going against a chairman that is from his state, not only from his state, from his political zone. So this is expected, and uh, I know that in, in the days to come, you might see so many of them, um, uh, so-called weak uh, 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 friends, uh, moving away from, from him. Don't forget, for example, the governor of um, um, or your state, Governor Mackinde is going to recontest this is as a second. No, I don't know how he's going to do it. How he will be uh, conversing for an uh, um, candidate from another party and also conversing both for himself as a PDP member. That will be a very very terrible strategy on his part. So, but let's see how this pass that by tomorrow um, the. The ban will be lifted on campaign. We will see the news coming out from uh, that story is something that should be worrisome to Governor Wiki um, as a politician. All right, Chris, um, let's quickly um, look at the, co the concerns of uh, Feniferi and the fact that they are throwing their support to Peter Obi. I want to understand the group, uh, what they represent. At the end of the day, they've actually given a reason, but you want to talk about the Southwest now. Do you think that the support is encompassing that it cuts across the entire Southwest? No, the the endorsement by Apenny Ferry. Don't forget, Apenny Ferry is a is a group. It does not totally represent uh, a, every Southwest. There are also some people that don't belong to Apenny Ferry. And uh, so many people see that when uh, as a council of some a sort of elders. But over the years, if you have seen the pattern, most often than not, when uh, has always endorsed um, PDP candidates, as it were, right from 1999. Uh, uh, no, 1990, it was mock AD, uh, mock AD, but from uh, 2000 and, uh, 2003, they fully endorsed the candidature of. Um, um, former president um, of Sanjo, who was in PDP, although from the Southwest, and um, subsequently they have endorsed other uh, uh, presidential candidates from PDP. Um, so even during the last election that brought in uh, President uh, Muhammad Buhari, Afeni Ferre endorsed Good Luck Jonathan as their candidate. So, but it's a big, it's a huge leap for P2B and campaign team. For a, an organization like Afeni Ferry to endorse him. What this goes to show is that the OB campaign has gone beyond what people want to believe that, oh, is a Southeast uh, uh, agenda, obedient are only from the Southeast and the rest of them. That is what other parties and um, uh, presidential candidates have been trying to sell. But from the, what you have seen in the past few days, over the, uh, um, all the mighties, the various cities, Abuja, Kano, um, Jaws, uh, and other places, you see that the movement is going beyond what some people thought. Initially, they said they didn't have structure. But from what we have seen now, you can see that they are well structured. If you see the way they organize their campaign, their rallies, and the rest of them, you see this as a, an organization that is well structured and knows what it wants to do and where they are heading to. So for me, it is the endorsement by Fanny Ferry only opens the scope of a perception about this will be presidential uh, um, candidacy that is not just limited to one part of the country. Afeni Ferry has 
but how that endorsement is going to um, turn out for him in terms of vote from the southwest is what we're going to be uh, what we we'll, we'll wait to see in 2023. Forget that formidable candidate from the southwest in the person of Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu of APC is contesting the election, and it is believed that the people of the southwest will fully back their own uh, when it comes to 2023. All right. The, the papers, uh, at least two of them, are going with some stories uh, regarding the the constitution of the campaign uh, teams for the two major or the two leading political parties, the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Congress. Uh, for instance, the Nation newspaper has this uh, story uh, where it says Atiku bypasses Wike or bypasses Wike. Allies named Saraki Oyinlola as advisors. Um, then we go to uh, we go to Daily Trust, uh, which says disquiet in the APC over composition of campaign team. Uh, Oshiba Joamechi's silence raises dust. Uh, council fails to issue letters to nominees. Tinubu begins campaign with prayer session. So, what are your thoughts on sort of, sort of this perceived? Um, uh, 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 bypassing, if you want to call it that, and the silence of some of the uh, dramatist personnel who were part of the, the presidential primaries in, in the two parties. Well, Kofi, there is no way the political party is going to have everybody in the campaign team, um, council last it year. I think that of it, about 440 something, uh, 440 something like that. I don't know the number of that of PDP. And so there is no way everybody can be. Uh, be a member of that council. What will happen is that everyone will be doing their own things in their only two ways and the rest of them. Um, when you look at the uh, story by the the nation, I'm not surprised. The, uh, the nation is focusing on PDP. Uh, we know the ownership of the, the nation. Um, I would have also thought that the nation will also talk about those agitation in APC. I've seen several people in the APC who felt that they ought to be in that uh, campaign um, council already complaining um, that somebody in Lagos uh, who believes uh, he, he ought to be there and they be saying that the party does not reward true loyalists. Whatever he meant by that, I don't know. But the uh, the campaign council have been constituted. So, uh, Matriko went ahead yesterday to also appoint certain advisors, the person of Saraki, and some others as um, advisors in his campaign team. Um, the, the, the parties have to close ranks now. There is no time for all these sorts of division and uh, most likely uh, they have to get the, their house together. The campaign starts tomorrow. In as much as I know that the campaign has started far, far uh, back, um, it's just officially, uh, it will be officially um, on band tomorrow. And we're going to see a lot of fireworks in the days to come. But I hope that the presidential candidates and the parties will focus on the core issues that Nigerians want to know and not just resort to personal attack. Tell us what you want to do about the economy. Tell us what you want to do about insecurity. Tell us what you want to do in the education sector. Tell us what you want to do in health and also infrastructure. Tell us how you can be able to handle the issue of ASU far better than Buhari and the government has done. You can see how they reversed themselves yesterday after asking the vices to open the university. Three hours later, they reversed the, the, that directive and the universities have remained shut. Um, let's quickly take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper. It talks about the disquiets in the APC over the composition of campaign team. Uh, but, I mean, still looking at that, there's also... Uh, the fact that the vice president, Amich, is quite silent and some people have been suspicious of all of that. And um, there's also another part that talks about the council failing to issue letters to nominees. I I'd like to share your thoughts quickly on that. We just, I just finished talking about that now. I just, what I just finished talking about. Um, I've said it that they have to move ahead. Uh, for the campaign, uh, council letter, it was a statement issued by it yesterday that it's going to be an uh, nomination service tomorrow to kick off their campaign. That, uh, that, after that, 
their letters will be issued to all uh, members of the council. I saw that uh, press statement, and they've asked every. All right, Chris. Another one that's quite interesting, it's still on the Daily Trust. The federal government backtracks withdrawal order to reopen varsities. I mean, just before then there was an order, uh, you have to open the universities, and then the federal government is withdrawing that particular order. Well, what's really going on? The federal government order was out of place, and also rightly uh, issued a statement on that order that at no point in time, they have key to the university that the federal government is the guardian and owner of this university and the state government are also the owners of this university. So that they had the right to open the university at any given point. They don't have the key to the university. In fact, ASO had nothing to do with opening or, or closing of university or even facilities within the university. That is even the, uh, the job function of SANU. Uh, so the non-academic staff, they are the ones that clean up the university, they are the ones that um, take care of electricity, water, and other infrastructure in, within the university. That of also is just to walk into the classroom and teach and go away. So they have told the federal government that they have nothing to do. So if the federal government wants to open their university, that is their cup of tea. But I think that, that, that statement was not well thought out before the NUC came out with that directive. And it was good that they could listen because are you opening the university? What are you opening universities for? If the lecturers are not going to be there, you want the students to remain there. That in itself, once we allow the students back into the campus without them being taught, then you are breathing a, lo a lot of things can happen. They can go up protesting and rioting, and that will cause a lot of problems for both the university and the system. So I think for security purposes, and they will do that later and the university. So I, I think that's the best. Thing to do. The best thing for them to do now is sort out the problem with ASU. Agree with ASU on some of the terms that have been agreed so that the school can be open, the lecturers can go back to classes, and the students will return. That is the way to go. All right. Um, I'm afraid we'll have to leave that. that. Chris K. Wandu, thank you so much for your time. I uh, wish you had more time with you, but of course, we'll do our best to start earlier uh, next time. Um, we're watching to see how the campaigns. Um, will go. Um, next time when we're with you, the campaign should have been about uh, six days to seven days old. We'll see what uh, would have transpired by then. Thank you so much. Yes, for Kofi, uh, yeah, Kofi, quickly before I go. It is also advanced. The, we, the media, should also get ready for it. We're just talking about the politicians. The media should also get ready so that we're able to make sure that all the gladiators are asked the right questions and they must give us answers to these questions. You have a nice day ahead. Thank you very much. Chris Kane Iwando, uh, Chartered Mediator and Conciliator, our guest analyst on Off the Press this morning. We'll be right back. We have a look at what happened today in history and when we return, we dive straight into our first major conversation. Please stay with us.